guys. So this afternoon session, we're, the plan for us is to keep it um, a little bit short and sweet. We're going to aim for an hour, um, which can always be longer because Jack and I get carried away and talk too much. But we are going to try and keep it condensed. One thing we really wanted to do was just cover off some of these basic push and pull patterns because it's, we talked about it this morning, about forming the foundations of everything that we're going to do. So we're going to go human flag this afternoon. We're going to look at back lever. These will ring true this morning with what we've done with muscle ups and, and handstands. But unless we start to continue to layer and build this foundation of, of fundamental strength, we don't get to go and play at a higher level. So if you can do a muscle up and you want to do a front lever, there's going to be a certain amount of work you're going to have to do just to get basic strength up to be able to go and play at that level. There's always going to be a movement or a skill component of what we're doing in calisthenics of connecting the chain together in a specific way for a given static hold predominantly with the levers it, it kind of applies to that but those are always going to be underpinned by just getting stronger and we say it all the time get stronger you need to get stronger you're not strong enough so the principles are really straightforward it's just about how we program them so it's a bit of a science and an art about how we kind of bring those things together but if you want to do one pull up your first pull up or you are aiming for a front lever or you wanted to go from 10 pull ups or we need to just get more force out of our pull up or more velocity the same sort of principles are going to apply. So we're going to run through some focus on vertical push and pull patterns. Horizontal is a little bit easier. So we can do bodyweight rows and we can do push-ups would be our examples of our horizontal push and pull. Our vertical push and pull, we're going to classify as a pipe push-up, a dip and a pull-up. These are two push-based movements at the top, but they just happen in opposite shapes. Same principles kind of apply. And we just want to give you some tools to go and play around with and understand how to kind of scale them. So just the, I'm going to go through these and then we're going to give you some practical stuff to, to go at. So the first one comes from creating a stable base. In all of these positions, like the pull-up, we talked about the dead hang before. When we did the dip position for the muscle-up, we talked about front support. Um, and for the pipe push-up, again, it's about being able to create this stable shape which we can move from, control the spine. If we don't have a stable base, we can't produce force. There might come a point though where you can start to get the certain amount of wins with your pulling strength for example but to go from three to four or five to ten if it's this system which is falling down then that's going to be where we need to go and spend some time we could just go and do more band assisted pull-ups but then it's not actually if you're finding that band assisted pull-ups aren't translating into actual body weight pull-ups this might be one of the reasons that we just don't have that chassis isn't strong enough so that could be, do we go and do more active hang work? And if I'm getting good at a 30 second active hang, am I putting more weight around my waist to do an active hang? I need to overload that stability. My opportunity is to try and get my scaps positioned and holding in a stable shape for longer so they can produce force for longer. Predominantly the muscle types around our stabilization system is a type one muscle fiber. Those guys are smaller muscles, they work for long periods of time, and they like endurance. The type 2 muscle fibres that are predominantly made up of lats, anterior delts, pecs, those muscles produce a lot of force but they tire quite quickly. If the stable base isn't there, if the stabilisation system fails because it's underactive, the big prime movers just try and take over and then now they're going to try and stabilise the, 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 um, the, the joints and then create that stable base. It doesn't work as well as if we actually let each muscle group do what it's designed to do. So we need to create some, some overload in here. We won't do too much of that today because it's just it's more of the same. It's actually just active hangs. It's some more front support. We get a lot of this from our pushing patterns through our handstand work, like your isometric work that you've been doing in your frog stands is great for the pushing foundations. And it's often this pull where people get get people to get to get stuck. And when we do the human flag, we'll do a single arm active hang. Like we're big fans of like some of the hanging stuff in here. If you've got a rig in your gym, just doing more hanging work. So you're constantly overloading in different patterns, more single arm hang transfer work. That all serves to kind of build this, this, these stable foundations. And there's also our YTW, more like isolated progressions of just creating more stability, reverse flies. That sort of stuff is going to be in the workout that we do to finish the, the weekend tomorrow. So we will kind of visit some of this stuff. But this hopefully is going to give you some context around that. So we might need to do some upgrades to chassis. The second part of this is that we've got these, for, let's take pull up as an example. We've got these three specific sort of tools that we might want to use. So an assisted pull up is a useful thing to do with a band. But we're not going to get 10 bodyweight pull ups just from doing assisted work. The band and the argument are against using assisted only is that at the bottom of the pull up, you've got the band on full stretch. 
So it's actually helping you the most from the position of the movement just to get going. So the band is helping pull you up due to the stretch, it's providing less support as you come up through the movement. But the hardest bit in a pull-up is getting going from that bottom position. And that again comes partly back down to the stable base. So what we can do, we can use banded because it's good to get people through the range of movement. These work really well to get reps in the bank. You might do 10 banded pull-ups, wicked. You put in some capacity and you're building some endurance. That's our capacity strength to a certain degree. And then these, the eccentric and the isometrics are going to form part of our more specific strength. So it might be that we're jumping up to the top of the bar and we're going to lower down for five seconds and we're just going to work that eccentric phase. Creates a lot of tension in the muscle, the um, strength adaptation off the back of that is good so we can start to build eccentric strength which will ultimately then turn into pulling strength. So by lowering the force, we can lower more force than we can pull. So by lowering we're building more strength in the muscle and then down the line when I try and pull that muscle has a greater capacity to produce force and therefore it transfers over. So by only training the eccentric, we get better at pulling by default to a certain degree. And those two things are going to work well together. Some assisted work to train the concentric phase, but also just hammering this eccentric work to build and, and stress that muscle to be able to produce more force. Isometrics are different points. These are good for sticking points. So the isometric hold in a dead hang is the bottom portion of our, push of our pull up. It might be that we, we're struggling to get out of that real bottom hole. So we're just going to come just into the bottom position. I'm going to do an isometric hold there. I might do 10 seconds and then just let go. I might do 10 seconds in the middle point, 10 seconds at the top. You can range those through. <coughs> in isometrics, we'll gain strength 15 degrees either side of the point that we're training at. So if you can't get out of the bottom bit or you're getting, you've got a sticking point in the movement, just training wherever you're at will give you a little bit of a strength adaptation either side of that. If you can't get your quite get your chin above the bar, and we're kind of doing isometric with the bar in line with the eyes, we're going to start to be able to inch that up just by training in the isometric shape. You can work all of these, and that's where the programming comes in. And then the final one is just around capacity. Starting to just put more reps in the bank. There's a, there's a value in doing easier stuff. So more horizontal pulling, just building the capacity that you've got to pull force, will translate into a pull-up if we're starting to do some of this other stuff as well. So easier stuff, less costly, it's less stressful on the system, but it's just volume. We just need to get reps and basic raw strength in the bag to help these more specific positions. And that's where some of the variations come in that we'll look at again tomorrow. You can do different forms of pull-ups. There's different kind of progressions that you can do within calisthenics that don't always have to be a strict up and down pull-up pattern. For those of you that need to take that to the next level and you want to go, so that's pull up number one. If we want to go from five to ten or we want to start to go and do something like a more specific movement at a higher level, we can just start to make these same principles more advanced. So rather than using assisted, I might be using weighted. So if I can do ten pull ups, I'm going to stick, stick a weight vest on and I'm going to drop back down to five. So I'm training in sort of a more maximal strength adaptation phase. It's just again just a different way of building strength in the muscle. Eccentrics, I was doing some work on my front lever earlier on this year and I'm just doing eccentrics with a 20 kilo vest on. It's just flipping, it's the same principle, it's just overloading that system. Isometrics, the same thing, and we're just constantly looking for that progressive overload. How do we find ways in body weight training to consistently stress the system so that we get continual adaptation? Any questions on any of that? that makes sense. The art is what we've put together in the virtual classroom where we've kind of programmed those things. So we've got programs for pull-ups and, and we've got a new um, section of that coming out in December which is called Bodyweight Basics where all of this stuff is going to be built in, specific pull-up programs. But if you, if you look at it and go, I don't know how to structure that together, how many eccentrics should I do, how many isometrics, the reps and sets aren't complicated but if you sometimes just want something prescriptive to follow then we've kind of mapped it all out because you could do, you could argue I'm just going to do assisted one day and then isometrics one day or eccentrics. It's how you kind of blend all that together, which is in the bit of the skill of the, of the programming. Happy with that. So what we're going to try and do is just play with some of this a little bit. And we'll take um, the pipe push-up progression and the pull-up so you guys can feel some of it. That will then take us into a vertical push and pull pattern, which is our human flag, which is basically pushing with the bottom arm, pulling with the top. 
And if we understand how to kind of, if we get our press cells warmed up and prepped again with these two overhead pushing and pull patterns, it will feed in. Those of you that want to do some human flag, we can go through some progressions. Some of you guys might want to spend a bit more time understanding this as a takeaway, and then we can do that as well. If you want to do both, we can do that. Just, we'll make a plan. No questions on any of that? Either it was boring or I did a really good job. Um, okay. Let's get some space. Let's have a look at our pipe push-up progression. <coughs> so if I'm going to start to build this strength in my vertical pushing plane for my handstand, but also for a human flag, I'm going to have to get better at producing force in this direction. And we're just going to load these patterns more progressively. So my first one for my pipe push-up shape, if I start in press-up position, I'm just going to walk through, create this V position we looked at in the Pluto sniff. Elbows behind the body, same principle, but I'm just going to drop in and back out and Jacko can take over. So it's going back to the same shape he started in, as it drives back up the hip and everything stays flexible. And we'll about this this morning. And think about where his, his, the position his hands, shoulders and head are making as he's going through. He's getting into the shape that's very similar to his, his frog stand position in terms of the head is forward of the hands and the shoulders are getting stacked on top. Yeah? rather than elbows flaring out to the side and head coming down between the hands. That's sort of the common mistake people make. We get into that shape, which puts the shoulder in a, in a, in a poor position. It's not good for strength in terms of producing force. It's also not good uh, for impingement. The big mistake people make is they come down, they flatten the back up and they push it. See, now he's getting towards more of a horizontal push rather than driving back to the same position. It's a, it's a difficult one because it's easy to say, well, don't do that. But the, the brain understands the path of least resistance. It's easier for you to push horizontally, like a push-up, than it is push vertically. And things like if your hamstrings are tight, it's harder to get back into that shape as well. Um, two of you that I was talking to this morning about it, was, I was talking about trying to like uh, compress like your, your quads up towards your abs to make you come back into that sort of V-shaped position, rather than starting like that, coming down, which you might open a little bit, and then as you come back up, just staying open. You want to try and really work hard in your midsection to pull yourself back. After that, <clears throat> we're basically looking at how do we then overload this. So when we were talking about making a frog stand slightly harder without adding a weight vest on or anything, all we did was say, can we put our hips a little higher by putting our knees higher on our elbows? And all of a sudden that felt harder on the shoulders that were supporting us. We do the same thing here. If we take our feet up, so if we walk down to your box up, his position on the floor, hip, in relation to the shoulder, it's high, but it's not like on top of the shoulders. Yeah, so if we go feet onto the box, raise them up, walk the hands further back. Now his hips are virtually on top of the shoulders. Still comes down and makes a triangle with the hands, so the shoulders stay in a nice position. It's still relevant to our frog stand goals and our handstand push-up goals that we may have. Um, but there is a lot more load going through the shoulders and it's a lot more vertical rather than sort of diagonal. Yeah, so progressively sticking him up. If we then raise the hands up, we're making the progression harder, not through load, through range. So rather than stopping where your head touches the floor, which is not really that deep in terms of a shoulder press. If someone was doing a barbell or dumbbell press and stopped here, like half reps, half reps, bro. Like we've got to come all the way down to the bottom before driving up. So having the hands higher means we do get to this, this bottom <coughs> position where the hand is by the shoulder, but you're going to find that it's hard getting out of that deep position. Um, and Tim changed the box as he raised the hands up to make sure that his hips stay in the same high position of his hands up and feet up at the same time to make sure relatively it's the same. Yeah. Then it gets juicy. Yeah. Do you want to have a play with some of that? Oh, the last one I just want to show you, just if you find any of these difficult yeah. and you, you haven't tough. got, um, you're trying to struggle to bridge the progression, we're just going to use the band just like before, just for a bit of support. So it's going to take a bit of weight out of the movement, but it just again means that on that sticking point here, I can work that push pattern. You can do eccentrics on this stuff if you want. If you're trying to build some more strength and you want to kind of work through some more range, you can't push out of the bottom position. Our eccentric pattern is going to be low, slow, lower down. I might hold the bottom. I'm not strong enough to get out, so I'm going to push an eccentric five, four, three, Two, one, set down, reset. Five, four, three, 
two, one, and hold. Push the eccentric on, or isometric, sorry. And reset. Your shoulders know about it when you're starting to put some of this like, the high tension intensity stuff about it. Sound good? Good, Bob. So just feel that backwards push. Just drop it in and just drive out the way that you came. Push, push, back, 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 good. You've got to drive backwards. So your instinct there, the brain just goes, it's way easier if we just push this way. So you've got to go back. I always think like, just go like you're on rails. So you've got to go in and out on the same line. And it's, it does definitely feel like you're going backwards away from the parallel bars to create that vertical line. Let's try one more. I use boxes all the time. I actually like it um, for the handstand push-up. Okay, push backwards and up. Push back, 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 back. Good. So, so just what you were doing before, just let, what we were doing before, elbows, point here, come, come go down to the shape. Elbows, and then they were just, you were letting them point outwards and coming in there, yeah, yeah, coming in there. Whereas we want to screw, so my elbow crease, point my elbow crease forward and match my elbow back. That creates external rotation of the shoulder. It's going to put your shoulder in a better position and the elbow in a better position. It's going to load up your triceps a little bit. Yeah, and then your head look is going to make a triangle. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, make a triangle with the hands. Good, and drive back up. So I'm here. I'm screwing there. It's that action. That little twist. Yeah? So just show me that. Before you do anything, just stay in that pipe position and just show me that little twist. Here, relax, relax. There, the difference is there. I'm not turning the hand, watch. Hand doesn't move. It's coming from the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah, so you're just talking that up. Nice, nice cue. Um, imagine you've got a piece of paper, on, a newspaper on the floor, and you're going to try and rip it open. Yeah, but you're not turning the hand to create that action. Yeah. And then head comes forward and makes that triangle. Good, okay. And then the other thing I want you to do, yeah, I want you to walk forward, so I want the forearm to be vertical. So look, if I'm here, rather than being back there, where I've got that angle, I'm going to try and stack vertically and come down and drive back up to that shape, trying to keep a vertical position with the forearm. So you need, I need you to stick your bum higher and load yourself further forward. Yeah, yeah, come, yeah. That, that just helps you like load up onto the air, so that nice and tall. This stays vertical. You come forward and down, forward and down, forward and down. Better. Yeah, it might feel a little harder, but we're going more vertical. Yeah. Boom, nice, yeah? yeah? That's better, yeah? Yeah, but better, yeah. better. I'm gonna use the wall, and maybe just use the wall with one leg, find the bottom, and then come up without the wall. Maybe come to it if you need it, yeah? Um, and, then, and then I've got one of the ones to try for you. And at the moment, these aren't too, you're good at these, these aren't too bad. I'm trying to find the thing that's gonna be like, ah, that's really hard. Find the one that's the weakest, and that, the other one might be Wolf, Wolf. Yeah, but you still did it. You still did it, it was still good. Try, try that, because then the other one is just the wall facing one. So come down, take your feet off. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's just working in balance. Have a little rest. And the only other one, have you done any wall facing ones? Yes. And how do you find them? Do you find them harder or easier? Or well, similar. Kind of yeah. Because they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you. Um, yeah, mate. Well, yeah. You, I'm glad. Well, you should be. The, um, the wall, when you kick up to the wall, your body is in a position of feet going towards, which is fine. But if you think of the body angle of your. If I'm my frog stand, if this is my uh, head and this is my hips, my frog stand, I'm like this, and then I'm going to try and go on there so that I'm up like an angle that is a little bit more similar to a wall facing and so if your hands were like here and your head's going to here and you're going to go against the wall that way you see how that's going to be loaded a little bit more on an angle it's an angle like a handstand push-up but which is basically the same angle that your trunk is at in a in a frog to handstand yeah you want to try so walk up and then 
Right, and then once I stay there, right, one point it says, and then I want, to, want midsection strong. I want to stay in a good shape. I don't need to arch your back. And again, just have a play. What are you doing here? Good. Nice. Rest, rest, rest. And I just want you to try one last thing, is to come at, like, where your head is making a triangle with the hands, your triangle is very uh, shallow. I want to try and like come a little bit further forward. Because like do a frog stand. Like show, uh, show him from the side because you can watch it later. So just do a frog stand. Right, look where your shoulders are here and your head and your eyes are there. So I want you to take your, when you make your, your hand stand against the wall, your head's going to come that far forward. At the moment your head is probably coming that far forward. So the strain in the shoulders is a little bit less. Yeah, so if I was... So almost like there, I'm going to try and come down to that position there. Because that distance is more like the distance of my frog stand. That will be slightly harder. Yeah, 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 yeah. That might be the one. That might be the one. Right, it's going to, yeah, so you're going to try and come to that line. Yeah, okay, there we go, we found it. It's right, rest, rest, rest. We found it, we found it. That's the one, that's why. Yeah, you yeah. do that, you'll do your, your frog tongue thing. Does it make okay. sense that the, yeah. you were training in a range that was a little bit close? Yeah. And actually the frog stand, you're a bit further away. Yeah. We literally was going through and he was, everything he was, he was struggling with his frog to, the frog to hand stand to get out and everything I was like giving him until the last one, he was like doing, I'm going like, well, if you can do those things, and it was like, ah, then we found it. Doesn't necessarily matter what it is, but then he needs to then go away and he knows now that I got that.